Welcome to Ways to Love Your Money, and we're so excited because this is the kickoff to our new season, season five. So happy new year. I hope that you've had a wonderful holiday season, and our guest that we're going to have today is Mr. Robert Kenyon, who is just, um, it's just an honor to have him as a part of our, our journey here, and he was the one that actually introduced me to Discover Magazines. He's the owner of Discover Magazines, and he also has a travel company. So I can't wait for you to hear about um, his story and uh, really about the experiences and the encouragement that he has for the new year. So stay tuned. We'll be right back, and we look forward to your comments about the show later on today. Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and we have an incredible guest, Mr. Robert Kenyon, the owner of Discover Magazines and also a travel company, which I can't wait for him to talk about because this is really where the origination of Discover Magazines came from. But he gave me an honor um, just a couple months ago to be on the cover of the November and December issue of Discover Magazines. And uh, if you'd like a copy of it, just let us know. Give us a ring at 619-640-2622. We'll get you a copy. Uh, but it was quite an honor and a privilege to be on the cover as well as three-page article inside the actual magazine. So I hope you read it. I hope you get the chance to experience it. And again, Robert, thank you so much for, for the opportunity. And thank you again for being here on our show, Ways to Love Your Money. Well, it's my pleasure, Elizabeth. Thank you so very much. And your article was so informative. I, I know you commented a couple of times that uh, it was my writing, but it was your... <laughs> comments and your expertise that made that article come together. So thank you so very much. And okay. I, I do hope people read it because we have received rave reviews about the, the magazine itself and certainly uh, certain articles in there and our readership very much appreciated, I think, what you had to say. Well, and thank I'm, you. Uh, hopefully that they, well, it, it was a pleasure. Okay. And yes, I, I do. I, I uh, You mentioned First Cabin Travel, the travel company that I've owned since 1989, which is now what going on 32 years in yeah. business. And it was back in 2014 that I decided that I wanted to advertise the travel company a bit more. And so I reached out and I spoke with some of the local magazines that mm -hmm. I thought would be beneficial to my presence in the magazine for advertising. And after speaking with them and not reaching a meeting of the mind, so to speak, I decided to start to uh, discover magazines. And it's been, it's really taken on a life of its own. And it's yeah. because of folks like yourself Yes. Local community leaders, local community professionals that mm -hmm. add to the literary content that's so been so re well received, mm -hmm. and uh, really, I'm spending as much time on it as I am on the travel company right now. <laughs> so, thanks again for being part of it, and well, thank um, you. it's a pleasure to be here today with you. Well, you know, it's it's an amazing journey to have met you, and then there was so much that has happened this year. Um, I know that there was an event that um, I was honored at, but I couldn't be there. So Katie in my office was able to be there. But why don't you talk about uh, Power Women of San Diego? Power Women of San Diego, thank you for mentioning that, because it just, it took off like a skyrocket. And I uh, co-hosted it with the San Diego Film Festival here locally in San Diego. And we originally had planned to do it in August, but COVID, of course, changed right. Right. all of what we're doing in 2020. So what we did eventually was we went out to Hamul Casino and they mm -hmm. have an open air rooftop uh, setting and everyone that attended that evening, that was back in October, mm -hmm. everyone that attended that evening had their temperature checked, <laughs> had uh, uh, wore masks during the evening it, it, and it turned out the response was tremendous. Mm -hmm. We were only able to um, host 25% uh, of capacity wow. because we wanted to be COVID compliant. Mm -hmm. But the event took off and was so promising that uh, 2021, we're certainly going to do it again. And it was a wonderful thing because um, we had so many women, women entrepreneurials here in San Diego, mm -hmm. women who are in career leadership positions, women who own their own businesses as you. And with your stellar background, I mean, some of your titles yeah. and accolades, just were so impressive when I spoke with you and we did the interview. And ladies like yourself, it's been a pleasure to meet mm -hmm. all of them. And um, I have no doubt that next year we're going to be even more powerful. And uh, we certainly want to invite you back. Oh, well, thank you. I will be happy to come back. That's that's definitely an honor. And, and one, I was so disappointed that I couldn't be there. But 
because of COVID, I couldn't be there, but I did have Katie Steck, who's on our team, and she was there for me. But thank you. It's so wonderful that uh, what you say, it's such an honor. I really appreciate it because, um, you know, women entrepreneurs, we work very hard to to build our brand and build our name and build our reputation. And, and it's one of those things when you're recognized for it, it's, it's quite an honor. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so very much. So, so tell me about the travel business. You said it's kind of been a, it's been a bit slow this year. So how have you been surviving? How have you been thriving? What are you doing to basically it, it, kind of bring it back? Well, it, it has been a challenge. You know, 2020, when 2020 came up, I thought <laughs> that year resonated so beautifully. Didn't it sound great sound when we today. came into the new year? It sounded fabulous. It's going to be like the bang year. And then, boy, it was a bang year. Oh, it but was of a different bang. kinds, yes. And, well, we, for the last nine months, uh, quite frankly, we've been a dry dock. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, no one is going out traveling. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're hardly going out to local communities, much right. less around the world. Right. And we barely are an uh, international travel company. So yeah. we go out and uh, as well into third world countries. And it's always mm -hmm. been my, oh, my theme is to say that, you know, instead of going to the places that you know so well, maybe your heritage came from. Uh, go to the places that are unknown to you. And it opens up a fantastic opportunity for yourself and sure. for whomever you travel with because it changes everything. And and uh, I've personally um, certainly love travel because I'm in mm -hmm. the business. I've now visited 172 countries. Wow, um, wow. Where, where there being 196 in the world, mm -hmm. if you count Taiwan, the Chinese don't want us to do that. So, yeah. but uh, certainly most, most people should. And so it's, and I think, um, you know, you're an investment far more than I, but I think one of the best investments in the world is to spend your money on travel because it brings you a pocket full of memories that mm -hmm. live with you for the rest of your life. And whenever those times that are challenging and whatnot, you reach into that pocket full of memories and you bring it out and you recall that fantastic trip that you wow. took and yeah. it, it just takes you through the day. Well, we have, we have a gal on our team that she just loves to travel. It has to be part of her budget. It's something where she'll take, you know, several trips per year and, you know, she lives for it. So with that said, Robert, what, what is one of the most favorite experiences you've had in another country? Is there a particular country that's a favorite over another? Oh, there's so many. Um, it's, you know, I, as I mentioned, I like to go to the places that most people mm -hmm. don't. Sure. And, and for that, one of the reasons for that is because it's, it, it has an age of innocence. Mm -hmm. And there are very few places out there now that have that genuine innocence. I can think of two immediately. One is Luang Prabang in Laos, which wow. most people perhaps have not heard about. Sure, sure, <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, and the other is uh, the country formerly called Burma that is now Myanmar. Mm. And, and you go up there and, uh, you know, the clock had stopped. I mean, you're 20 years behind in time. Wow. wow. And that, but that age of innocence is disappearing. Mm. And you really have to reach out into these certain areas of the country. India is another. And I know it's very difficult over the years to get travelers to go to India. Mm -hmm. But I've never sent or taken a traveler to India that didn't come back to say that they loved the experience. Mm, yeah. Would they go again? Perhaps not. Yeah. But having seen the country and mm -hmm. all of what it, uh, mm -hmm. the values that they have, the uh, edifices that are there present in the country, mm -hmm. it's a magnificent journey. Mm -hmm. And, and so I, I might add to this, you know, when it, when uh, it's always been my, um, it, it's been my mantra, I guess. And I yeah. say to folks who are traveling and, and there's a difference between a tourist and a traveler, I think. Mm. And tourists go mm. in certain directions and travelers and others. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go to a country, you know, go to listen, not to preach. Mm -hmm. Go to witness and not to judge. Mm. And go there and let that country change you within you rather than you coming in and saying these changes should be made. Mm. I think those changes could live with you for the rest of your life. And wow. if you go with that attitude with an open mind and open heart mm -hmm. and reach out to the folks and the countries that love their motherland as much as we love ours, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it makes such a tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. So, so Robert, did you have someone inspire you when you were a young person to travel? Was there a, a, like a, uh, was family, was that a big part of your, your growing up or what, what triggered no, this actually, passion for you? Well, actually it's my uncle Sam. I, okay. uh, I joined the Marine Corps uh -huh. at 17. And he sent me to first to Hawaii with the first Marine Division, and then uh, to Asia. I did actually did two tours in Vietnam, which wow. were not 
you know, that wouldn't bring you back so much. But I also visited the Philippines and Hong Kong and thereafter went into Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And that that is what stirred the passion in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never looked back. So, Robert, you have three young children. Have they um, also instilled that same passion for travel and experiences in this world like you have? Or is there one that maybe loves it more than another? You know, uh, I married late, so yes, I have three young children, and um, it's not been difficult to instill that passion because when you begin to look at photographs, yeah. and of course we have uh, the photographs in our magazine that mm-hmm. show on travel, and uh, it's it's the rare person that wouldn't say uh, they want to go there or they want mm-hmm. to try it or they want to go somewhere, and certainly the children are involved. They're a bit young yet to go out there on their own, mm-hmm. and. Uh, but we certainly go, we go locally now. We haven't, we've been to Japan yeah. um, and, and they loved it and they did very well. And they're very, what I love to see is they're very excited introducing themselves into the culture. So they're eating that's the great. food, they're going out, it's great. And, yeah, and usually, ch- usually children don't want to try something if it doesn't look good <laughs> or something that they're not familiar with. They don't necessarily want to, you know, bite in. So they're, they're open to that. That's great. They are. They are yeah. very, very much open to that. Do they have any wish list places that they want you to take them to? Well, gosh, I haven't asked for that yet. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid what I'd get back. Sure, but I think sure. One of the, countries, one of the uh, I should say, continents that I would like to take them to first, and I haven't yet, but I need to soon, is Africa. Mm. Because, you know, who doesn't love animals? Yes. And when you get into Africa and certain places in Africa, you can just see a wealth of that and mm-hmm. it's a great great experience there's uh, yeah i've never been to africa i've been many many times that i haven't gone on the safari be it early mm-hmm. in the morning or late afternoon each one is different and each be it the topography be it the animal sightings sure. be it um, the, the knowledge that you're gaining from your driver mm-hmm. it's just overwhelmingly beneficial yes uh, that is one trip that i've said i wanted to make i want to see that in its in the raw sense, you know, and see how these animals actually live on their own without us interfering in their lives. So I think that would be amazing, incredible. It is so, and that's that certainly should be on the top of a lot of bucket lists. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so Robert, is there anything that you could say for 2021 is going to be a focus for you, something you want to build or something you want to talk about um, to, to help promote your business or to uh, just let people know to be more aware of? Is there anything that you can, you can kind of strum up there to, to let them know about? Well, what I'm trying to do for 2021 is to build some kind of a you know, and optimism. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that both in travel and in the magazine, you know, quite frankly, we haven't, haven't even had an interest from people yet in travel. We've been in dry dock with travel company Mm -hmm. because there's such an unknown. When is this going to end? And I don't think anyone really knows the answer to that. And so usually you get people planning a year in advance because some of the hoteliers and some of the campsites, what have you, mm-hmm. are booking up that far in advance, mm-hmm. the better ones, certainly. Sure. Uh, but we haven't had that yet because this unknown is there. So what we're starting off with in January, February, mm-hmm. and I was, we were trying, we we're just uh, thinking about this the other day at a meeting. And so what we're going to do is, to get that positive attitude going is we're going to do a, an engagement and wedding guide. Oh, and I think, you know, great. So hope springs eternal, as uh-huh. they say. I think if you can begin to say, okay, let's get the folks out there who have been, you know, they've been with each other. They've been trying to plan a wedding, which mm-hmm. you can hardly do these days. Right, uh, right. Or an engagement. And engagements have taken off more than just someone kneeling and handing a ring. I mean, there are videographers now who are going out and doing these wild scenes uh-huh. with the engagement party. So we're hoping that that begins to start some kind of a positive attitude mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about what's forthcoming in 2021. Mm-hmm. We really need to get past this. And, yes. you know, most of the times when you're looking at um, events, you think, well, there's a silver lining somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I really haven't been able to find that in COVID. <laughs> and I, I, I think if you own a plexiglass company, yes. maybe there. Very much but so. But other than that, um, but I think we do need to get past this. We need to be mm-hmm. more optimistic. And I'm hoping that what we do with the magazine and certainly when we begin to get more interest in travel that it comes to fruition. Sure, sure. And I think travel is such a part of people's lives and the experience of travel, the recovery of your personal self during travel. Those experiences are so important. 
Uh, but I think even now packaging things within the United States, I'm sure, has been probably a bigger choice of people. We've seen all those sprinter vans out there and people just driving around and doing, you know, their own kind of cultivating. But yes, it sounds like you're trying to pull experiences together that you can maybe do a little mini, mini awareness or mini attractions for them to do. And, and that sounds incredible. I mean, people need this today. Uh, but again, we're on Ways to Love Your Money, which is a money show. And for that, it's about budgeting too when it comes to travel. Uh, I have met people that will budget more for travel than they do for savings. But at the same time, we have to respect the ability to make money to be able to do the things that we would do so that we can do them for our entire lives. Uh, so uh, I, I know that that was one of the questions that we asked you is about too is, you know, from a money standpoint for you, uh, when you started to kind of build your, your businesses, build your wealth, um, did you have anything that was something that you focused on so that you can continue this lifestyle that you really enjoy doing? Have you done anything specific? Well, yes, I, I think what you need to do, and, and that's from my perspective, only my personal perspective, is that you have to have some kind of a nest egg just to take you through the emergencies, the downsides. Look mm -hmm. at COVID. Yes. I mean, COVID is, and if you don't have that, you know, certainly it's great to go out and travel, but if you're mm -hmm. spending all your money on travel, yes. you're not building that net mm -hmm. you're not building that reserve or emergency fund, then you're you're aiming for trouble. Mm -hmm. And and certainly we did that in the beginning, and that is that we had a nest egg so that we could overcome those times, That's great. such as we're facing now, that we could survive. And there are, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people out there that didn't, and yeah. they won't be surviving. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of planning is essential and, mm -hmm. and i agree with you 100 percent that you can't you know it's great to <laughs> to go out and travel as much as you'd like on the other hand you best prepare for what sure. might be coming that's totally unforeseen mm -hmm. absolutely and i think that's you know we're going to end 2020 on that note because we just don't know the uncertainty but thankfully there's a vaccine out there now they're starting to you know put it out there we'll see how long it takes to get to the masses of the population and and let's just hope we can get to a life where we can enjoy all the things that we have grown to love in our world, but then also have a respect for family, respect for money, respect for experience, and, and to really prepare for the future. So um, I thank you so much, Robert, for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Again, thank you so much for having us be a part of the magazine. It's been an amazing journey. And uh, if you would like to get in touch with Robert and you want to actually maybe work with his travel company, please reach out to us. We'll put you in touch with them. Uh, you can call us at 619-640-2622, or you can send us a question, questions with an S at Elizabeth with an S, Dawson.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. We want to hear more stories about what you want us to talk about. And again, if you want to get in touch with Robert, we will happily put you in touch together. So again, thank you so much, Robert, for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Hope you have a beautiful holiday season, and uh, we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Great interview with Mr. Robert Kenyon. We're happy to have him here, and uh, what a joy. I wish he could be here personally, but it was just virtual, and it worked out just well. So with that said, I know we have an audience question, and uh, my, my gal is going to tell me, or Miss Rachel's going to tell me what that question is, and, and I'll try and do my best to answer it the best possible. What is a good financial tip for someone coming into the workforce fresh out of college? Well, that is a journey for a lot of college students today because maybe jobs in the job market or trying to apply for jobs are not as, um, uh, they're not as easy as they once were where it was face to face. Now it's about Zoom meetings and things like this. It's about networking and how do you network in an in a environment where you really can't be in a social place. So it depends on the industry that you're wanting to go to work for. What I would definitely encourage you to do through your college, there's probably an, an alumni group that's looking for things. They're probably posting jobs there, and you might be able to have some, uh, some good feedback, um, as well as start looking at the companies that you would really like to work for. Uh, so do some research about them. Just as if you're interviewing and you're you know, 35 years old or 45 years old, you want to find out about the company that you're interested in working in. Uh, you want to give the facts back to whoever's interviewing you if you get that interview. The hope is, is that you get the interview and land it, uh, but you're going to really want to have your facts set. Uh, apply, apply, apply. Don't just put an application in and expect someone to give you a phone call. 
You're going to have to do something creative. Just like we have the show Ways to Love Your Money, maybe you want to consider something like doing a video introduction of yourself and send it to the person, the HR um, director, and maybe they'll, they'll get to see this video from you as an email and they'll get to see your bubbly personality and, and uh, your excitement about wanting to work for that company. These are ideas that we have to get creative about today because it's different. The environment has changed. It's going to continually change. And the social ability to be able to network isn't necessarily there. There are networking networks. So you can look at them on your social media, on, on uh, just the internet, start Googling you know, certain networking groups basically about that industry that you're, you're kind of you know, looking into working for. Um, You've been preparing for this, and if you went to a good college, they should actually be telling you certain things to do so that you can work through their alumni um, and see if there's opportunities there too. So I encourage you to do you know, as much homework about the subject as possible. Uh, it's difficult. Make sure that you're in a great state of mind because uh, we know the difficulty of graduating, going into, into the workforce, and we've been in a pandemic year. Uh, until this pandemic is over, it's going to be more and more difficult. So uh, stay encouraged. Talk to people that you know. See if there are any opportunities for you out there. And, uh, you know, start to investigate the companies you might be interested in. I hope this was helpful. I wish it was more helpful. But it is uh, at least a start um, to be able to go from. So I hope you stay tuned. Next week we'll have another show coming out. Again, yay for season five. We're excited to be here. I can't believe that we're already in season five. This is amazing. So uh, we'd love your feedback or send us a question at questions with an S at Elizabeth with an S Dawson.com or give us a ring. It's time for first quarter review and to start the year off right. So happy new year. Cheers to 2021. We couldn't wait for you to get here. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.